I'm not gonna do that. That hurts. It does. It definitely wakes you up. Snoozing. Uh-uh. so far. Did you probably have a good one next week? Did I have? No, I just was wondering. But you look pretty benign. Yeah. Uh, it's been, 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 it's been,
The students we currently have under scholarship are 25, three seniors, two juniors, a sophomore, and 19 freshmen. The reason that's so heavy handed on the freshmen is many of our scholarships are first year scholarships. So those others you see on there are uh, separate scholarships that sometimes last longer than a year, depending on which scholarships they are. Um, we're very proud to say that our average GPA is 3.37. We got a few 4.0ers in there and yeah, pretty awesome. And of course we do our welcome back sign on bonus. Unusually, that is our most popular scholarship. We can give four years worth of $1,000 rides, but those are $100 gift cards to new teachers who are CISD alums, and that is by far our most popular. We gave 65 of those this year. The second page is uh, a report on exactly the students that we gave scholarships to this past year. We gave those uh, in May, and 19 of those from all five high schools, as you'll see if you'd like to read through those. Are any of those students here tonight? If you are, would you come forward? Come on up. Most of them just got out of school, so, you know. So please introduce yourself and tell the where you're going. Hi, I'm Katie Willard, and I'm going to Texas A&M University. Good job. A perfect example of some of the great quality of kids that we have. We, have, we receive quite a few applications. We go through them with a fine tooth comb. We have a committee that does that. And, uh, and they're all just as great as, as she is. And then the next page are our educator scholarships we gave out this year, 33, that was a record for us. Uh, virtually every teacher that applies and qualifies under our criteria is awarded a $500 scholarship to use over the next year towards their continuing education. Most of them are master's degrees, degrees some are PhDs. Um, but they're all to further their value to Conroe ISD. Are any of our teacher recipients here tonight? They're, they're all in school. They just got out. They're in school, yeah. <laughs> I actually had a couple of them write, one in particular that said, I'd love to come tonight, but the money you gave me, I'm putting to good use and I have two classes. <laughs> so yeah. we thought that was great too. Um, and, and many of these, as you can see by reading through them and the <clears throat> asterisk at the bottom, are returns, meaning that we're actually helping them year, year after year until they actually get their degree. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. And as it becomes more known, we have more applicants. So that's a great thing. And then the last page is our seventh annual scholarship breakfast um, was held this year. You may remember we had a 10 year anniversary of the uh, foundation uh, last year, but this year uh, and this year was our actual seventh breakfast. So we haven't had a breakfast all 10 years, but a bunch of them, 11 years. Anyway, what I want to point out is that PBK and Ian Powell's here. I know I saw him when I came in. Where'd you go, Ian? There he is, right down there, front row. Is for the seventh year running our $30,000 presenting patron sponsor. And <laughs> They are so loyal to this foundation, so supportive, and not only do they write the check, but they also help us garner other high-level sponsors, and those are listed there. Elliser Constructors uh, is now a $15,000 guest speaker sponsor, and that's uh, over multiple years as well. Brookstone Construction stepped up to a 12-5 sponsor this year, and Duratex said, pick us too. We want to do something, and they became a $10,000 sponsor. And Dr. Stockton, I haven't even told you this. I've already received information that we will have another sponsor in this level, an additional one next year. So we're very excited about that. And then as you can see down at the bottom, finally, uh, this is our one major fundraiser. We take donations all year, but this is actually our one fundraiser. And we grossed, actually this says 128, but we actually grossed 130 this year, excuse me, netted 130,000 this year, net. So, and all of that goes towards scholarships. Uh, the Education Foundation, uh, which started several years ago, uh, kind of struggling for an existence, uh, now has well over a quarter of a million dollars in the bank. And then this, that's on top of what we made this year at our breakfast. So we're doing very, very well. We're going to continue to, to give ki our kids and our teachers uh, scholarships. And we're uh, very happy to serve Conroe ISD. Thank you so much. Now the Jim, uh, Linda, Maris, I mean, y'all do so much for the community. We appreciate it so much, especially for the kids. Okay, 
Uh, Mr. Powell, thank you, PBK, for your sponsorship uh, of those future teachers for CISD. And uh, Mr. Foster, if you'd pass along our the board's thanks to uh, these uh, uh, general contractors that are so generous, I'd appreciate that as well. Uh, Dr. Stockton, item uh, 2B. Item 2 is special district, 2B is special district recognition of the Woodlands College Park High School DECA. Here to introduce our recipients is Dr. Mark Murrow, principal. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, it is my honor and privilege to be here this evening uh, to help recognize College Park High School's DECA International Championship team. And to do that, I'd like to invite uh, Mrs. Julie Lowe, their teacher and sponsor, to come forward to give you some information about the program as well as introduce her team. Good evening, and thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm here to represent DECA and my amazing team and chapter that got to go to international competition. I want to make sure that you know how much we appreciate your support and your continued involvement. I know many of you um, offered your support as judges at our competitions. The opportunities that these students have are amazing. DECA is an organization for high school students that have an interest in business, marketing, and finance. And they do amazing things. The young men that we're going to talk about tonight, um, that would be Hudson, Kenny, and Christopher, wrote a business plan. And their business plan went all the way to the international level. And probably one of the most exciting things that I've ever been a part of because they worked hours upon hours, not for classroom credit. These boys got nothing in the classroom. Everything that they did was ex extrinsic rewards. And so their efforts are absolutely amazing. So I'd like for them to come up for just a second. I know that they had a quick something that they wanted to tell you about their efforts and their paper and all of their hard work. Hudson is a junior, Hudson Attar. Uh, Kenny Young is also a junior and Christopher Nelson is a senior. Although Kenny, Chris, and I are the ones being recognized tonight, our success is in fact the product of many people's effort. And with that in mind, I'd like to thank particularly President Ray Sanders for reviewing our, I'm sure, amateurist attempt at professional writing. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank our local chapter of the DECA institution for providing us with um, tireless support and continued um, belief in our success as students. I'd like to thank uh, the school board and Connor ISD for providing us with the fiscal support we needed to go and compete in Anaheim in the preceding competitions. Um, I'd also like to thank my family for their tireless moral support and always being behind me in everything I've, I've done and continue to do. Most of all, I'd like to thank Ms. Julie Lowe for continuing to be behind us and always having our best interests at heart. She's truly a selfless educator and deserves um, fully the recognition that she's she's had tonight so thank you all very much what was the business plan it was actually um our business was called business match and the thesis was to um, introduce contractors and business people um, and have them interface in new ways on the internet so the idea was that if we got business people to conduct more of their um, doings out in the open we would begin to open up the professional marketplace to more people with less qualifications and less connections. So perhaps people with good ideas or skills that otherwise would not have the, con uh, the, the um, connections necessary to compete in the marketplace would be able to um, enter into what is today a, a regressive and competitive place to do business. So that was the idea we had. Very good, also. sir. Very good. <laughs> Uh, just to reiterate on what Hudson Itar said already, uh, we are forever grateful for the generosity that you guys really bestowed onto us. Uh, being on that stage was uh, one of the happiest moments of my life, and really, it could not have been possible without you guys. Uh, anytime I see a picture of us three on that stage, I just think of you know, all of us being there, all, uh, all of the CISD board, uh, Miss Lowe, and my family members uh, that really helped us uh, make this dream become a reality. Um. I would also like to thank the CISD School Board for um, the continued fiscal support throughout the year to the DECA program. I also want to uh, thank uh, President Ray Sanders, for, who's not here tonight, for um, looking through our paper. And I also want to thank um, Ms. Julie Lowe for uh, a fantastic two years that I had um, doing the DECA program. And also my two wonderful partners. Um, I couldn't have chosen better partners to do this paper, so thank you. Good, good. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I've definitely forgotten someone. I also want to thank Mr. Greg Shipp and Dr. Mark Merle as they've provided us with ongoing support and our state officer, Stephen Perkins, who's here tonight just to support the chapter and these young men as they receive an award. Thank you. I would like to thank you, Jordan, and I think I can speak on behalf of everybody here that uh, gracious ways overwhelming. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's extremely impressive. I so proud of you guys. Dr. Stockton, um, item uh, 2C. 2C, our next special district recognition is um, going to be introduced by Mr. Greg Colson, principal of the Woodlands High School. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, uh, it's an honor to be here tonight to recognize a very special young lady and I'm going to introduce our track coach, Noel Hansen, while he's on the way up. He can talk about her athletic accomplishments. What I would like to tell you about is a little bit about Katie's accomplishments as a person. Not only is she a great athlete, she's also a wonderful young lady, great representative of our school, our community, our school district. And um, Katie, if you want to come this way, Coach Hansen. Um, as a senior this year, uh, she was nominated for the highest award that our school uh, gives and was one of our top recipients of the Highlander Excellence Award. So uh, she is a great person as well as a great athlete. So to tell you about her ath athletic accomplishments is track coach Noel Hansen. Before we do that, <laughs> we actually have the – I'll step in. So. Okay, I'll get it. We actually have – How do we turn our zone here? Spinning it up again, this is the girls' 800-meter run, Class 5A. In 5A, we have uh, Gorm, Grisby, Rodriguez, Santos, Robertson, Willard, Terry, Gills, and Miller. They're going out quick. Wow, yeah, they're getting after it. Uh, the high school leading time, 201 by Mary Kane. Didn't run that in a high school-affiliated race. Hannah Meyer, 207.86 uh, is the next fastest time. Meet record again, 208. So they're out. 28, 28, 28 mid. So not messing around. All these girls going with, too. Eight girls, nine girls within five yards of each other. Nobody backing off the accelerator. Willard sitting in second. Well, if Willard can first. dip under 210 today, that would put her uh, into the top eight times in the country so far. The pack and comes across the line. 
59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Man, they're about four abreast. Six people across the line within one-tenth of a second of each other. On the outside in the purple, now swinging into the front. That's a Liam Miller, I believe, a Boyd. 213 seed time coming into this. So, Gorm also in the front mix up there. So, Miller now pushed into the back stretch. Willard putting the foot down. Here we go, ring it up. To go, 135. 136. So, who's got the 200 meter speed here? There's still five girls still getting contention here. Miller trying to hold on. What are we going to see here? We're at 153. Can we go sub 210? A big kick here. Will she let her pass on the inside? Miller trying to hold on. Willard holding on. So Katie Willard. Two seven two. Two oh eight two. Oh two oh nine. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. Uh, <laughs> you know, the one thing I want to say about Katie, a lot of th obviously there's a lot of things I could say, but, you know, to be able to coach her for four years is really uh, an honor. And you know, she was a great teammate and uh, all throughout her career. Uh, a couple things she anchored at the Texas Relays earlier this year, she anchored our uh, sprint medley relay to a uh, Texas Relay Championship, a school record in the nation's uh, number one time. Uh, she also ran at the state meet a little bit later than this race. She ran at the state meet in the 4 by 4 relay. So... She had a lot of talents that she was uh, a great to, to, to help our team. Uh, specifically, you know, she won state last year as a junior. And I don't know, you know, the, the, the state of competition in, in the state of Texas is really amazing. It's a very, very difficult to repeat in any athletic endeavor in the state. And she did it, and you can see how, how, how well she did it. So uh, it said a lot about her poise, about her determination, her goal-setting ability. And she did it very, very humbly. And uh, she was a great teammate throughout the year. So. Uh, I know she's going to have a lot of success as she moves forward, but I think uh, we were certainly happy to have her be a, a Highlander here for four years, and, and I know I, I really enjoyed getting to coach her, so so that's me. Hi. Um, thank you so much for letting me come here and giving me this opportunity. Uh, I would first like to thank my principal, Greg Colshin, for all that he's done academically and athletically. He's given me a lot of opportunities to go out and be um, a representative as um, part of the Conroe Independent School District and as well as the Woodlands High School. Um, I'd also have a big thank you to my coach, Noel Hansen. Uh, he's put up with me for four years, and he's give, put a lot of time and effort into making me into a really incredible athlete, and I will always be thankful for him. Um, also, thank you to my parents, my mom, Laura Willard. She works also in the Woodlands High School, and uh, my father, Kyle, and my brother, Jake. Um, they really have kept me grounded and kept me going through all of my four years through everything that I've been doing. And um, lastly, just thank you so much to the Board of Education and the Education Foundation. Um, I was very thankful to be given a scholarship by uh, Ms. Nelda Blair, and um, it's really going to help me fulfill my um, career at Texas A&M as becoming an educator and a teacher, just like all of you all. And um, it'll also help me along my way as a continuing my track career at Texas A&M as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. On behalf of Dr. Stockton and the Board of Trustees, we'd like to present you this award. Congratulations for not only just being an outstanding athlete, but it's always, it's always a pleasure for us to not just see an outstanding athlete, but an outstanding student, an outstanding person. Um, you know, when I, I ran track back in the day, way back in the day, and I, I honestly know how difficult that was. After about 200 yards, I was dead. So I know how difficult it was coming around that second lap. So once again, Katie, congratulations. We wish you the best at Texas A&M. Just don't outrun any Tigers, all right? <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Congratul
Good luck, Katie. Thank you. Everybody except the Longhorns. <laughs> okay, then I'll go down. Uh-oh. Yes. Too bad. I've stuck tonight in 2D. I'll call Marshall Schrader up, Director of Custodial and Maintenance, to come up and present uh, the awards to the Custodial Department. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Husband, members of the board, it's my honor to come before you to recognize the Ambassadors of the Year before the Maintenance and Custodial Department. Uh, the seven members that were selected uh, were selected out of more than 450 employees, and so they truly are our ambassadors. Uh, as I call their names, I'll ask their families to stand. Uh, Lane Tyson, been with the district since September 2008. He's a lead HVAC control specialist. If you would just stay up here, but he'll just stay there. Pat Spike, been with the district since April 2011. He's our lead fire alarm and technician. And just an aside, his daughter won an ambassador award at <laughs> Wilkinson <laughs> Elementary Intermediate School this year. Raymond Hensley. Been with the district since May 2004. He's at Conroe High School as one of our custodians. <laughs> Delma Hernandez, December 2010. She's our night utility crew lead. Lucina Medina Gomez, March 2007, College Park High School. <laughs> Maria Villa Gomez, June 2011, Oak Ridge High School, or excuse me, Oak Ridge Night. And last but not least, Erasmo Vila, August 2003, the Woodlands High School. Uh, I'm 2E, please. Yeah, we, we combine custodial yeah, and I right. apologize. Uh, how about uh, 2F? 2F. Uh, Ms. Pat Paris, coordinator of fine arts, is here to present the NAM Foundation Best Communities for Music Education Award for 2013, which is also becoming an annual event. In our <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. The Conroe Independent School District continues to gain state and national recognition with regards to the quality of our fine arts programs. From east coast to west, from Texas to Chicago, the Conroe music programs serve as ambassadors for our community. 
The Dam Foundation is a nonprofit organization with the mission of advancing active participation in music making across the lifespan by supporting scientific research, philanthropic giving, and public service programs from the international music products industry, evolving from the National Association of Music Merchants. I am honored to announce to you that for the second consecutive year, the Conroe Independent School District has been named the NAM Foundation's designation of best communities for music education. The foundation acknowledges schools and districts from, from across the country for their commitment to and support of music education in schools. This designation was made possible because of the commitment by you, the board, the Conroe ISD administration, the parents and community. I could not be more proud to state that we have the best of the best in our teachers who set high expectations for student success and share a vision for enduring results for our students and community. I would like to recognize some of these great teachers that are here with us today. Could you please stand? In commemoration of this designation, I am pleased to present to you the following proclamation from the governor of the state of Texas, Rick Perry. State of Texas Governor, to all whom these presents shall come, greetings. Know ye that this official certi certificate is presented to the Conroe Independent School District in recognition of receiving the NAM Foundation Best Community for Music Education Award 2013. Signed, Rick Perry, Governor of Texas. Three of you can come on up too. Absolutely. Come on up. <laughs> Let's get a picture and then we'll do the handshake. Thank you for being Thank here you. Congratulations. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Stockton, it's pretty amazing to uh, uh, continue to see our kids as well as our professionals uh, excel at every level, in every uh, form, in every, every capacity that you can excel in. Uh, we're known for having beautiful schools. Well, they wouldn't stay beautiful. <laughs> those people we just recognized. I wish I had got to say that before they walked out. But uh, uh, you have a tremendous team, and I congratulate you all the way down to every every person that works for you. Well, thank you, and I, I always will have to add that it starts at the board level. Your support is critical to our success. So thank you very much. Mm. And one more time, we have so much to be thankful for. Item two G. 2G, uh, here to introduce our recipient is Dr. Chris Hines, Deputy Superintendent. Dr. Hines. Good evening, Mr. Husbands, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Stockton. It is my honor and a privilege to present to you for recognition this evening, Conroe Independent School District Coordinator of Physical Education and Health, Dr. Sharon Sturchy. Uh, get Dr. Sturchy to come up while I say just a couple of things just quickly. Uh, Dr. Sharon Sturchy was recently selected as the 2013 Honor Award recipient by the Texas Association of Health, Physical Education, and Recreation and Dance, or we call TAFERD. The Honor Award is a peer-nominated award. It's for individuals who have made significant contributions to health education and physical education fields. Dr. Sturchy has been recognized for her excellence in teaching, outstanding administrative achievement, and significant overall contributions and leadership in her profession. She is considered a nationally recognized curriculum expert in her field. She has served the education profession for 41 years. Uh, 
I've known her for a long time, not that long, but um, <laughs> with the one part being here in CISD, because Dr. Sturchy joined our team last year, and we were very uh, fortunate that she made that choice to, to come join us. Uh, she has taught all ages from preschool through college, and at one point in her career, she was even assistant principal. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Health and Physical Education from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. She has a Master of Science degree from uh, in School Administration from Southwest Missouri State University, and a Doctor of Education degree in Curriculum and Instruction from the University of Houston. Her programs have been featured in various articles and news shows. And if you stopped by Irons Junior High last week, you would have witnessed 77 of our PE teachers who spent 16 hours last week with Dr. Sturchy jumping, dancing, moving, and vigorously having fun at our first ever champ camp. Uh, this is the kind of difference that Dr. Sturchy makes. She's able to give teachers at all levels wonderful ideas, real ideas that they can take back and implement in their classroom. Uh, her excitement is contagious, her outlook is always positive, and her role on campus is always supportive. Her commitment to the overall health and well-being of our students and staff is genuine. Uh, Sharon and her husband Richard came to Texas in 1985, and their son Jonathan is the director of events for the Houston Astros. Sharon adds value to CISD, and I, for one, am thankful that she's joined our team. And as one, of, I'm going to read just a little quick excerpt from one of the nominations. She is the lady who opens the car door on the first day of school to welcome you into your academic career. She is the guest speaker who motivates a parent to begin making healthy choices for herself and her children. She's a traffic coordinator. You've probably seen her at some of our busy fun runs directing traffic. Uh, she is the excited aerobic instructor. She's the lady dropping off celebratory balloons to staff members that have successfully established an exercise regime. She is the boss that writes, I believe in you notes. She's the den mother who smiles and brings warm fuzzies because you know you are part of her PE family. She is the sunshine and the flowers all rolled up into one tiny little ball of energy. She is the best, and I would echo that, and uh, she is deserving of this recognition. So, <laughs> Well, on behalf of the board, I'm pleased to give you this plaque, which recognizes this achievement of the Texas Association for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance for um, June uh, of 2013. And I have to echo Dr. Hines of how excited we are that you're in our district. And I have to say, you are my favorite banana. And the story, <laughs> the sto the story behind that is, I think the first time that I met Dr. Sturchy, which she was dressed up as a banana, mm -hmm. um, and that was to encourage healthy eating because she serves on the Healthy Living Alliance, and I happen to also serve on that. And her enthusiasm, her support, and just her positive attitude is so over the top, and it's unbelievable we have her in CISD. So congratulations. <laughs> Just a, a little thank you. I don't think I can say thank you loud enough or passionately enough for giving me this opportunity to be in such an amazing school district. The talent that I just witnessed in this room, I, I'm just amazed to be part of this family. So thank all of you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Duncan, I don't know how you do it. I really don't, but uh, congratulations on on your team. And thank you, ma'am, for all you do. Dr. Stockton, item 2H. I'll ask Mrs. Drum, Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, to come to the podium to introduce our next recipient. Mr. Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, Dr. Demetra Phipps has been named Region 6 
Middle School Assistant Principal of the Year for 2012-13 school year by the Texas Association of Secondary School Principals. Every year, TASP recognizes outstanding principals and assistant principals from the 20 regional education service centers in the state. School administrators are nominated and chosen by their peers within their regions, and then applications from these recipients are reviewed. Nominations are based on exemplary performance and outstanding leadership in secondary education. The finalists are selected by TASP Principal Image Committee, and the annual Outstanding Principal Assistant Principal Awards are presented each summer during the annual conference in Austin, Texas. Dr. Phipps will be recognized at the annual conference in June of 2014. This is Dr. Phipps' 19th year in education, with the past four years being at Washington Junior High School, where she is an assistant principal. She has a Bachelor of Science degree from Stephen F. Austin University, a Master of Education degree from the University of St. Thomas, and she recently achieved a Doctor of Education degree from the University of Houston. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Dr. Demetra Phipps, Region 6 Middle School Assistant Principal of the Year. Yes. Mr. Husbands, um, school board members and trustees, Dr. Stockton, it's an honor and privilege to be named Region 6 Assistant Principal of the Year. I'm very fortunate to be a part of a school district with excellent leadership in Dr. Stockton, Roman, and my principal, Hartwell Brown Jr., Washington Junior High. He's been very supportive and encouraging in my professional growth. And I also would like to recognize my husband, Reginald. Thank you. And thank you for presenting me. Okay. <laughs> You know, it's uh, someone who's been the head of an ag, uh, organization and is someone who goes around now uh, teaching leadership and analyzing organizations. I can tell you that the ideas, the good ideas and the goals are set at the top. Uh, we, the board, our board approves those goals, but it's the people at the campus level that make it happen. And I want to tell you, I'm glad my little brother, Hartwell, uh, had the insight then <laughs> uh, to hire somebody like you, and I want to read this plaque and thank you for what you do. The Board of Trustees rec recognizes Dr. Mitra Phipps, 2012-2013 Middle School Assistant Principal of the Year, Texas Association of Secondary School Principals, June 18, 2013. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> You say all you need to say. <laughs> Art, well, I say with no disrespect, who hired who? <laughs> Congratulations. <clears throat> Mr. Phipps, thank you for loaning it to her. I know, you know, that doctor, you probably missed a few meals over that deal, so <laughs> we appreciate it. Y'all are y'all are welcome to stay or or or, you or not or, or not, as it may be. He said that's for hot pockets. Huh? Hey, item uh, two I is citizen participation uh affairs. Do we have anybody signed up to speak? Uh, the next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint, uh, complaint policies that are designated to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the 
person may appeal the administrative decision to the board at the properly posted as a pro properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district website. Those who have registered to address the board be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegates, delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, would you please call the first person who has signed up? Paul Zanuck. Members of the board of the Conroe ISD, my name is Paul Vanek. I'm the vice president of the Houston CPA Society. The uh, Houston CPA Society is made up of nearly 8,000 members in uh, Harris County and the surrounding counties of Harris County. And I actually am honored to do what, I, what I'm doing today. And this is one of the joys that I have of being a, a member of a CPA and also a member of the Houston CPA Society. We have a program called CPAs Helping Schools. It was formed in 1991 to encourage our members to become more active in local schools and education. In uh, 2002, we started a grant making program whereby we get grants to applicants from uh, pre K to the 12th grade. Since 2002, we've given nearly $400,000 in grant money to Houston area schools. This past fiscal year, we've had over 60 grants and we distributed over $50,000. Now, I don't have an issue, I don't have a complaint. I actually have two checks <laughs> because out of all those grants, we awarded grants to two schools here in Conroe. The first one here is for uh, Irons Junior High for their Game On program. And uh, we're, uh, we're distributing $8,000 in a grant specifically to their ropes course. The second grant is going to Travis Intermediate for their fine arts program, specifically for their band program. And I have a grant check here of $1,300. So for the CPAs in this room who are members, this is part of what you do. And for the CPAs in this room who aren't members, here's a plug. <laughs> Join, and you can be cool too, and give a lot, and, and give out at least fifty thousand dollars to schools in the Houston area. Thank you. Can, can I get uh, can I get Daytron in that? We picture? want to get Daytron in the picture, so he'll join. <laughs> for, those who, for those of you who don't no know, pressure. our our illustrious board member, Mr. Williams, is a CPA, so uh, and he maybe a fairly new member in the near future. <laughs> That would be Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cox or Mr. <laughs> Item number three, the consent agenda. You've had this. Uh, Seven. Second. And, uh, got a motion and a second. Uh, does anybody have any concerns about any item or need them removed? Very good. That uh, with a, uh, we'll uh, need further discussion. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like sign. And that pass it. Item 4A, bond referendum update. Foster, if you'll come and present our update. <laughs> Mr. Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it's my pleasure tonight to give you the update for the major project of the 2008 bond referendum. We're going to start with the Conroe High School ninth grade campus. Uh, 
This project is, has been underway for some time. It is scheduled to open in August or reopen for school in August of this year. It is on schedule. The uh, exterior brickwork for the new additions is about 95% complete. We consider the building envelope to be uh, dry, as we call it now. The interior finishes are beginning to progress. The systems inside the building, the air conditioning systems, things of that nature are running again, uh, or running in the new areas now. Uh, this summer, they are renovating the final phase of the existing building uh, to upgrade the control systems there. As you can see here, windows, paint, uh, next step would be floors and other finishes. Uh, the gymnasiums are the critical path for this project. Uh, they are on schedule, just as we had uh, hoped they would be. They are, uh, the picture was taken before the staining has started, but the finishes on the gym floor have started at this point. Moving on to Ann K. Snyder Elementary School. This school opens in August of this summer. Uh, this year, just in a few months, we have received the administration furniture. Uh, it has been assembled and installed. The interior of the building is substantially complete. The details you're seeing are the, the final details in the exterior to be completed on the project. This project is also incurring a, uh, a widening of Vernon Woods Drive in front of the, for turning lanes in front of the school. That work is currently uh, has currently started and will be completed before school starts. As I said, the interior of this building is substantially complete. As you can see, it is uh, nice and clean. We begin to receive the student furniture, desk, chairs, tables, cafeteria furniture uh, right around the week of the 10th of next month. At John V. Pete Junior High School, again, this project is nearing completion. It is on schedule. It opens for school in August of uh, this summer. Uh, as with Ann K. Snyder, the interior of the building is substantially complete. We received the administration area furniture uh, last week. We anticipate receiving the student furniture, cafeteria tables, desk chairs, uh, for the week of July the 10th. And it is also clean and finishes. Uh, the details on this job are the exterior of the building, the landscaping, the grass, the those finishing details, and this one as well gets uh, widening of Longmire Drive, returning lanes, things, and uh, all that work has finally been approved. It's underway. will be completed before school starts, uh, so all the connections to the major streets are currently in progress. Flex School number 14. Uh, this school is on schedule. It is scheduled to open in the summer of 2014 for the 14-15 school year. Uh, it is in structural steel and masonry. We are constructing the building envelope uh, at this time. Uh, as you will see, there is water in the building because the envelope is still wide open, as you can see from our pictures. However, the building systems are being installed and protected. Uh, the air conditioning systems, ductwork, the main trunk lines, big piping systems, those things are going on underneath the, uh, the roof deck. Uh, the exterior walls and the roof are the next two major scopes of work to take place. Flex School number 16, again, this project is on schedule. It is scheduled to open in August of 2014 for the 14-15 school year. It's in much of the same position as Flex School number 14. It is structural steel and masonry. They are constructing a building envelope and detailing the structural steel now. Uh, like at Flex School number 14, the building systems are being installed as the roof deck progresses underneath them. And that is our major project update. Very good. Yeah. I just have a, one question. Uh, how is the uh, uh, <coughs> line at Conroe High School? Say that one more the time. The repair of the under, under, underground so line, the yes. third line. The board item that was approved last month. That work, uh, it started in earnest this week. So the uh, the uh, large hole, if you were to go in the middle of the Tiger Den, the central administration area, there should be a very large hole in the middle of that floor uh, as we speak. Uh, we started on some of the exterior line work last week. Uh, that work has been uncovered and the fence has been put back. Some repairs made. Uh, we did find one other, one additional storm line exterior of the building that was deteriorated. Yeah, was uh, for the scope of the work relatively minor. We had it uncovered, so we repaired it while we were there. Uh, but the the major work, the, the repair of the the uh, storm line underneath the building is has just started yesterday. Great. So it, it will be, I'll have a better update for you next month. Thank you very much. Very good. Anybody else have any questions? Very much, Mr. Foster. <coughs> <coughs> Item 5A, preliminary 1314 proposed budget. 
And I'm very excited to invite Mr. Cox here to present the preliminary 2013-2014 proposed budget. <clears throat> Somebody, if anybody. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I'm pleased to be here to present the preliminary budget presentation for 2013-2014. Uh, each year as we go through the budget process, we kind of develop a theme for the budget. And this year, our theme is meeting the needs for continued growth. Uh, and, and the good news is we're in a funding environment where we can actually do that. So we're, we're very, it's been a very good budget process this year. Uh, at the end of our last budget workshop, uh, April 16th, uh, we closed with this slide, and that was laying out the things that need to happen to complete the budget. And I'll give you an update on that. Obviously, the state legislature has completed their legislative process, and funding has been quantified. Uh, so we have a very clear picture of what the state is funding us at, at what level. Uh, the, also associated with revenue is the local assessed value. We have, we have solid preliminary numbers for assessed values. However, we don't, I should qualify that with the fact that we don't have certified values. Don't get certified values until July 25th. Uh, so there, there can be some minor changes to the number, but we feel very good about the numbers that we're using. They, they, historically, they never change. But, but we will have certified values on July 25th. <clears throat> so that, the, the funding, the revenue side is pretty, is pretty much in the final stage. Uh, the, the next process was finalizing the expenditures uh, and the final budget and tax proposal. Uh, we have for you in this presentation tonight a recommendation in this area, uh, and we will discuss that as we go through the presentation. And then finally, the final step is the public hearings and budget approval, which will occur on August 6th and, and August 20th when we will conduct public hearing and final approval of the budget. <clears throat> Looking at certified values, I mentioned to you that we have preliminary numbers. You'll probably note that they're higher than we had uh, each time we presented this. They've gone up slightly. Uh, that seems to be the, the historical pattern uh, in Montgomery County in recent years. And, and we're very fortunate to live in an area that has such a vibrant economy because that's what drives this. Uh, so we are now estimating uh, an increase in property values of about 6.8%. Uh, so that certainly uh, bodes well for us. The, uh, <clears throat> the attendance data has not changed since you last saw it. We are budgeting based on uh, projected growth of 1,100 students. You will note if you, in that uh, third column there, total yearly change, that our growth in enrollment has been trending down the last few years. So we are seeing a gradual decline in, in enrollment growth, or we have the last few years anyway. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, we budgeted in 2013 for a growth of 1,100. We actually had 1,270. Uh, we're budgeting again for 1,100. Uh, and, and we don't know what will happen. If the trend continues, we'll probably be closer to 1,100 than we were last year. But, uh, but we, are, we feel comfortable with the 1,100. Projected revenue, I mentioned to you that we're in an environment where we actually have the funding to, to address the needs that we have. You can see that uh, the state uh, is uh, the funding formulas are generating an increase in revenue of projected at 35.5 million. This effectively replaces most of the money that was cut two years ago. So it's not all of it, but it's a, it's a good portion of it. So uh, this, is, this is a significant amount of revenue, but I think one of the important things that you'll see in this presentation is that they front-loaded the return of the revenue and we will, in fact, need a portion of this revenue to, to balance our 2014-2015 budget. So 
We'll keep that in mind as we go through this presentation. <clears throat> as we got into the budget, one of the things that we wanted to do as we began to see that we were going to have a relatively strong funding year, we wanted to define what are our objectives for this budget. And we laid those out. Uh, Dr. Stockton was leader in uh, uh, objectives. And number one, we want to meet the needs for the 2013-14 school year. We want to provide a strong salary increase for CISD employees. We think that's important. Two years ago, there was no increase. Uh, we were fortunate the last last year to give a good raise, and we that trend this year. Uh, we wanted to provide for additional safety and security in the district. Number four, we wanted to preserve funding for the 2014-2015 year. We did not want to lose sight of the fact that the funding was front-loaded. We need to preserve that funding in order to, to ensure a, a sound following. And finally, we want to provide a tax decrease to see it for CISD patrons. Getting into the budget itself, looking at projected budget uh, increases. Uh, <clears throat> number one is the salary increase. We're recommending in this budget a salary increase of 3.25% on the midpoint and also a sub rate increase. Uh, this is broken down about 8.9 million for the 3.25% increase on, in the salaries and approximately half 500,000 for the sub rate increase for a total of 9.45 million. Uh, the health fund contribution increase, we're recommending $2 million. Uh, this continues to be a challenging area. Uh, it will continue to be a challenging area, uh, but as we have in this budget a $2 million increase to funding to the health plan. Uh, <clears throat> in addition, uh, the third item is additional personnel uh, for both normal growth related to the 1,100 students and the opening of two schools, uh, plus additional needs that we defined as we went through this budget process. And we'll look at that in more detail on the next slide. Uh, in addition, we have bilingual and Kate maintenance of effort funding, uh, uh, along with some miscellaneous stipend adjustments, that's 765,000. Each year we do a budget, rec we reconcile our actual payroll to the budget, uh, and it's always some discrepancies, and we're able to adjust the budget down as we bring our, our budget in line with our actual payroll. Uh, that's due to discrepant differences in pay rates compared to what we've got for the budget uh, <clears throat> and some positions that have gone. Uh, Next item is uh, we upgraded our support at the intermediate level by uh, converting 11 technology aid positions to full teacher professionals, uh, which gives those, those uh, campuses access to uh, another teacher rather than support for uh, <clears throat> the. Uh, Next is intervention funds. This is primarily in the secondary area. The bulk of this funding is going to secondary intervention programs, but it also includes summer school four and, four and seven uh, and some uh, CNI reading support. But the vast majority of this funding is secondary uh, intervention support, which is where the primary need is. Uh, next item is re restatement, a uh, reinstatement of the You'll recall we had a one-year elimination of our annual uh, uh, re uh, replacement program for fine arts uniforms and uh, vehicles. That was out of the budget last year. This is the reinstatement of that. In addition, uh, we have some new police positions that we're recommending, and we needed uh, vehicles for those. So that's another. Uh, that's a portion. Of the uh, campus and department budgets. This is primarily uh, related to the two new schools plus uh, nominal increases at all of our other campuses. This, this is primarily the funding for equipment and supplies uh, at, at the new schools and an increase in the budget for equipment 
applies at all of our uh, <clears throat> Then we have the normal increase for 1,100 students for transportation routes and fuel. Uh, desktop management is uh, an addition to our technology program. That's software for desktop management. Uh, that's uh, part of our technology program. And then find, uh, the facility maintenance, uh, what we're doing here is up in, is increasing our maintenance budget to enable us to handle more things in our budget rather than occasionally we've had to, had to cover these things out of bond money. We're trying to move away from that. So this will enable us to handle more projects directly out of our maintenance budget. And then finally, I'm happy to say one more time, we're able to actually net reduce our utilities budget after adding two new schools. What's so that bring the total to? It's uh, well over $5 million. Uh, so uh, we've had some amazing results in our energy management program. And uh, it's pretty phenomenal in this environment after like four or five years of this, that we're actually able to bring on two new schools and net reduce our budget. By, uh, so we're very proud of that. Uh, I mentioned before that we would look in more detail at personnel additions. Uh, the top line is the, stand, is the normal growth for 1,100 students and the opening of two new schools. If we were not looking at additional needs, our budget would be $7.25 million for uh, personnel additions. But we did this year go in and look at the areas that needed additional support. And what you see in, in these additional items is about $2 million of additional of personnel additions in specific areas that were identified for additional need. And you can see them there. Okay. Uh, Next, we move into salaries. Uh, this is the recommendation for the teacher salary, teacher hiring schedule for 2013-2014, as presented to us by TASB and their recommendation, which we endorse. Uh, it's a 3.25% general pay increase with a starting salary of 47.3, uh, and an increase of $1,680 for all of our teachers. Uh, so we believe that this is a, a good program. This will keep us competitive in the Houston area. We're quite comfortable with this program. The clock is in. Oh. So go right ahead. I have a question. You can answer in the next slide here. <laughs> Probably. Then. I don't think so. It's <laughs> 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 not going to be about future salaries. Just go for it. Salaries. Just go for it. Um, does this include paraprofessionals as well? All right. The 3.25% is across the board. Okay. Yes. From on the midpoint. On the midpoint, right. yes. I thought I heard you say that, but then we came yeah. back to that. No. We, we just we broke out the teacher salary separately. Right. Fair enough. Right. And substitute pair. Yes. We, we have up to daily rate. Right. Up to daily rate, $10 across the board. Right. Uh, and our competing just around us, uh, Magnolia, Montgomery, Tomball, um, Spring, Klein. How, how, where are we salary-wise? We're very competitive. We're, we're, are we within 500, 1,000? Oh, we're, we're generally higher than most of them, but, but it's all within, I mean. $200. The, the, the ones that are in Montgomery County, we're probably high. If you go into Harris County, then Others are either equal to, or we're all within a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, but we're clearly, we are the leader in Montgomery County. And Generally, we're not going to lose anybody because of salary. Um, very, very competitive. In I fact, was a, just curious. There, uh, when you look back historically uh, to, to nine or ten years ago, there's a competing district that of the 25 different uh, year salaries, at the time, that district had 23 of them were higher than ours, and today it's just right. the opposite. Very well. And obviously, our job there is to help people and that would like to come. Since you're I was just curious. Since you're entertaining questions, 
as we go rather than at the end. Before I forget, are we having to uh, buy any more buses for those additional routes for those schools? We're, we we buy buses every year. Right. And Is that in the transportation increase? It's not in that number, but but it's in the operating cost. Okay. That's the operating cost. So we're increasing. But we're not having to, we're not having to sell bonds to buy buses. Well, or are we? we we can. I mean, can. it, I it, it is. It, <laughs> well, I mean, we actually have it in our bond program, but we may choose not to. Okay, fair uh, enough. You know, that, that's fair. But we are increasing the number of buses. I think that was really more yeah. the question. We, we're constantly buying buses, but we're, we're increasing the totals. We, we, we effectively buy one to two million dollars. Other, you know, with the cut, with the number of buses we have, we almost have to buy buses. And just for the record, my vote is that, or my thoughts are, I would prefer not to buy buses to bond money, but to buy them out of. I, I agree with you. And, and we'll have we I unless we absolutely have, would have to. For we're going to have time. the flexibility to consider that option. And one last question: Are they propane? Are we going to install another? Uh, uh, Dispensing unit, or are we going to keep all the propane buses where we have one? Or we 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 are not going to buy another a third technology. We may we may buy some diesel and some propane. We actually don't have propane facilities at all locations. That, that's what that's, that's, that's what I was asking. Are we going to install another location? Uh, we, we don't have that so. in the plans right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, the 2013-2014 projected budget, uh, you can see the addition of $35.5 million in revenue brings us a projected revenue of $378 million. However, on the expense side, we've only projected a budget of $365.6 million, leaving us with a, pro a projected surplus in the 2013-14 of $12.4 million. This budget equates to a $23.1 million increase and 6.7% budget increase. So uh, it, relative to historical trends, uh, this is a significant, uh, this is one of our, our bigger budgets. However, when you look at uh, this over, over the last three years, you'll see that we actually have seen since 2010, 2011, a seven point only a seven point five percent increase, which equates to two point five percent a year increase over a three year period, which in relation to our growth in students and inflation is very good. Uh, so obviously uh, we uh, we adjusted our our operating level two years ago uh, and so now we're coming back up somewhat, but we're still overall a, a very nominal increase over a three-year period. Uh, those just with the, the, the increase in student growth and inflation combined is 14.2 percent, and we're looking at 7.5 over that three-year period. So that's quite reasonable. The uh, I mentioned to you the fact that we need to preserve funding for our 2014-2015 budget I'm going to walk you through the pro forma of, of what we're projecting in that area. As far as funding goes, I mentioned to you that the increase was front-loaded, $35.5 million. We're projecting, again, using 3% AV growth, and we, that's a conservative number, no question, and 1100 ADA growth. We're projecting an increase of only 6.8 million second year of the biennium uh, in terms of funding. So that 12.4 million surplus is going to be needed to, to balance that budget. In addition, this third item, the state in this legislative session introduced a mandatory 1.5% contribution by, to TRS by the school district. That, this is a new concept. In the past, all of the funding for the TRS has been passed through funding from the state, none funded locally out of the general fund. 
uh, for the school districts. They are changing that effective 2014-2015. So we will be required to fund 1.5% of TRS. This is going forward. So this will be a new cost in the budget going forward. So this is a, but I, I, I'm talking about funding now. So what we, what they did when they passed this was they said, we're going to fund it for you the first year, which is 2014-15. So they have, they're providing the funding for our contribution in 2014-15. We know our cost is going to be ongoing. We only know for sure that they're going to fund the first year. They have made no indication as to whether they're going to fund it in the future. So we're not sure. 1.5% of the TRS expense. Uh, 1.5 percent of our salary. Of our salary. Of the salary. But thank you. I just wanted to clarify what, what so, that meant. So you're saying they gave us one year of but, funding. And they didn't say they weren't going to fund it in the future, but they said we're we're going to have to fund it. We don't know whether. The but the amount they gave us is really for two years. But within that, they really only gave us one year of funding. Is that what you're? Saying? Yeah, they're only funding. That means they're only it funding. Starts in 2014. This starts, starts in, in 2014. Year. And they're not. Yeah. So they're going to provide the funding for 1415, and we don't know what they're going to do on going forward. They they have made it clear that 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 we're going to have to pay it going forward, but they haven't made it clear as to whether they're going to fund it. <laughs> now, to clarify: Does their budget for 2014 start in September like ours does, or does it start it in 2014 calendar? Oh, it's the same. It's the same calendar. I didn't say that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, looking at the pro forma budget, I just showed you our projected revenues are $22.2 million. A pro forma 14-15 budget, and this is just using uh, historical rates that we've used uh, and that we've encountered in the past. You can see that it's very reasonable and, and very likely that we will have, assuming we give a 3% raise, 1,100 student growth, that's personnel growth, that's 7.2 million for the base, you know, for opening two new schools and 1,100 growth. The 1.5% 1 TRS contribution, 3 million. Health fund increase, we know that at a minimum we're going to be looking at a million a year, and it may be more. Uh, and then other expenses of a million. We're looking at roughly $20 million. So. A $20 million budget is probably not unreasonable at all, it, plus or minus, uh, from depending on raises and the other special things. Yeah. So uh, clearly, uh, we will be adequately funded next year, uh, but it's but it's not over the top. By any we we should be we should be adequate in funding next year. Uh, and how it checks out, but I, I think we'll be fine. Now, the final item in the budget is the proposed tax rate. Uh, we have worked with our FAs, as you've seen uh, in our budget workshop. We're comfortable that we can reduce our debt service tax rate a half a cent and fund it uh, on an extended period of time. Uh, and so we're recommending a half cent reduction. This leaves us at a total tax rate of $1.285. Uh, this is, again, 47.5 cents below the tax rate in 2005-2006 when the compression was done. We believe that we're one of the uh, – we've done as good a job as anybody and better than almost everybody in, in retaining that compression uh, over the years. Since 2005, 2006, uh, I think this our, our records speaks well. And there's nobody in our peer group, you know, that's contemplating a tax decrease. I don't know of anybody. I, Every, I don't either. Everybody I've seen is going. I mean, if okay. and and I think all you have to do is go back and look at how many, how much of the 50 cent compression most of those most districts have, have taken. Eroded a lot of that reduction, and we have. There's a whole lot of rollback elections going on, whether they pass or not. There's a whole lot of. Uh, it's an appropriate time to thank you, Mr. Cox and Dr. Stockton.
Uh, I, my business takes me to several school districts, some large, some small. But I'll assure you uh, that when you attend the other board meetings and their budget hearings, you hear a lot of when can we get back what we had. Okay, when we when we get back that person or that teacher or that position or that budget or whatever. And I just want to tell you, thank you for not, I, I have never, ever heard because we had it, we're going to put it back if we get the money. I've never heard that from you. If you need it, you ask for it. And that's fine. But this is evidence that y'all have not, just because you were provided the money. Uh, I, I saw a district, uh, Region 6 uh, person the other day, and uh, I, I, t I talked to her. I said, I said, I'll bet you a dime to a donut that more than half of your superintendents complain about a funding cut in the second year because they don't plan it. And she said, oh, it's absolutely, it will happen. So I want to thank you both and, and give you both and your staff, of course, everybody that works hard and uh, deserves more and puts, uh, puts out twice the effort. Thank you to everybody. I, I can echo what people earlier in the evening said. We're very <coughs> happy to be here. We think this is the best place. Well, we're, we're happy to present awesome. that projected proposed budget um, to, to be able to provide an adequate raise for employees to provide for the next year, provide for the needs this year, safety and security, and decrease our tax rate. Uh, that's a slam dunk, so we're very excited about that. Uh, before you have to walk off of uh, item 5B, Dr. Tucker. 5B, we're going to ask approval now for that teacher hiring schedule and employee raises. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cox. <laughs> uh, any discussion? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying, uh, by raising your right hand. Thank you. And like sign opposed. Thank you. thank you very much, and, and thank you to all of you who work every day on behalf of our kiddos. Item uh, 5C, financial reports. Sure. Mr. Rice, if you'll come up and present that item. Good evening, Mr. Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. I'm here to present the financial statements uh, for Conroe School District for the month of May. Uh, these financial statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're going to look at this evening is the balance sheet. <coughs> uh, the balance sheet will show the assets, the liabilities, and the fund balances for the district. And as we always like to do, look at our cash and short-term investments. That is our largest asset we have, uh, we have out there. As you can see, the majority of our funds are invested in the pools. And we always like to track how we're doing with our property tax collections. As you can see, in 2012-13, in we were right on track. We were in the previous year, so we're still collecting taxes very well. One of the areas that I did notice is we're lacking a little bit behind. I don't want to say behind, but in our delinquent tax collections, because there's, our delinquent tax collectors have done such a great job that there's just not a huge base out there anymore. So it's, so it's just a little bit less than, than it was in previous years. For collecting those taxes. I don't know the name of the attorney. Okay. Uh, J.R. Moore's office collects our taxes and delinquent. Delinquent. delinquent uh, it's Erd, Blair, 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 whatever. Something's yeah, not that long. Samson. Uh, oh, one of the retired partners here tonight. Yes. <laughs> they do. They do a great job at, at collecting those taxes. Uh, the next statement is our income statement. It'll show the revenues and expenditures and fund balances for the district. And we always like to look at our revenue sources and looking at the local local sources. As you can see in the general fund and debt service fund, the majority of our revenues come from our property taxes at the local level. In uh, food services, they come from the sales of food. And in self-funded, they come from premium contributions. We can also look at our expenditures by function. In the general fund, you can see that the majority of our expenditures are at the instruction level. Uh, general fund balance projection, uh, no change from uh, last month's projection. Uh, just a slight decrease. We're hoping that that gets back up closer to uh, zero change or maybe positive. Uh, once again, just a slight decrease in the debt service fund balance. 
uh, no change in the child nutrition fund balance projection. Uh, looking at the self-funded insurance for the month of May, we had uh, total revenues of $2,343,000. Uh, $2, we had total expenses $2,712,000. Uh, for our revenues under expenses of roughly $400,000. Uh, for the year, total revenues of $24 million. Total expenses of $24 million. Uh, for revenues under uh, over expenses, $32,000, so we're about at break even at this point. And that is including the $3 million that, that we transferred in there uh, in the month of March. Can I ask a very unpopular question? Are we going to have to have another budget amendment before we hit September? It's like very possible that we will recommend using some of our surplus for yeah. to, to supplement this fund further. Three million just brought us back to even. Uh -huh. And claims aren't no. slowing down. One other question, it's sort of on that same topic, it's a bit off the budget. Okay. We talked about opening the second and we were we felt like we were in a pretty good position negotiate negotiating that. Where are we on that? <laughs> sort of we're, on the insurance topic. They, they made us they made a very good proposal i mean it's i wish we could close the other one and just keep this one that that proposal but uh uh we're waiting to get documents from now okay uh, but yes that that's uh uh it looks like it's a very viable and okay. it's primarily because we don't have the expense of construction well it's because we, we, we we're just going to take it for a certain number of hours at an hourly rate with no an, an hourly rate that's equivalent to what it's costing us to operate that and we got no front end costs right well and they need they need bodies in that clinic exactly. that's why yeah. we should be able to be in a pretty good negotiating right. position right because they they have an empty building basically yeah okay so all right so Thank we're going to be able to get that Let's, one at basically the same hourly cost that it's costing to run the other one without any cost at all. Are and they then, going to do the promotion or the marketing of it to our employees? Well, that, that's they'll work with us on that. That's a do a majority of it. Okay. Mr. Cox, I know this is hindsight. Why do we only fund, and I know I agreed to this, $3 million when we saw the trend, we were suffering a little bit of a loss each month? Well, I just yeah. didn't. It was my mistake. I mean, uh, you well, know, you also don't uh, we, know what the trend of claims. We took the turn with you, so. Well, I mean, you know, the, the uh, uh, we've we've had uh, a, a a long run of, of bad results. That's <laughs> about uh, But I hope that uh, you know we we never know for sure what's going to happen, and we're going to try to get it right. Fair enough. Keep well, working on it. It's it's a uh, it's guesswork at best, Mr. Cox. It's not your fault that the claims are up, uh, and it's not your fault you didn't move over enough money. I mean, you know that's uh, we voted no two years ago to an increase. We voted yes to an increase that's probably not big enough. Uh, we voted yes to the three million and not five or whatever it's going to take. And so uh, we can all uh, accept our share of the responsibility. What I would say is, uh, I you know. I don't like going into the year. I, I think you have a, a line item in there for the health fund, and and I know that we're going to pick up more we, revenue. We we, okay. we actually have have talked to Dr. Stockton about uh, making a recommendation in August to do some funding. So so it will be part of the budget, even though it's not a part of your presentation tonight. Well, it'll probably be a, a one time uh, moving move, moving some money. Uh, at that in August, at, at, based on how I'll we let performed you. this year in the budget. Okay. So I'll let you study on that. Come out of this year. Thing. That's fine. Thank you, sir. This okay, year thank you. Present. Thank you. And now, as we look at our participation in the Health and Wellness Center uh, for the month of May, we had 496 visits to the clinic. Uh, for the year, we've had a total of 5,301 for a monthly average of 589 visits. And again, that's great for employees, but it's not saving us a lot of money, right? Right. Okay. We're roughly breaking up. And, and that's fine that it's, I mean, I'm I yeah. glad that it, if it's not costing us, at least it's saving somebody. So. 
Just a quick financial update on the uh, $527 million 2008 bond referendum. We've currently sold $441 million of that referendum. Uh, we've expended and encumbered $431 million of that. Uh, we're estimating a total completion of the projects in the bond referendum of an additional <coughs> $25 million, leaving us with a projected forecast of $456 million. That will leave us with a contingency left in there about $70, $71 million uh, of unissued bonds. As we look at our investments, <coughs> Uh, the par value at the end of April was $353 million. At the end of May, we had $312 million invested. Weighted average maturity, 57 days. Yield to maturity of our portfolio, 0 0.099. Our benchmark, <coughs> the 90-day T-bill, 0 0.03. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Since we... Don't have a need for an executive session. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, and thank you for being here.